This video is brought to you in part by me, because I made this. Welcome to a good enough summary of Kingdom Hearts 3. You might be here because you just can't be bothered to play Kingdom Hearts 3, or maybe it's the year 2082 and you're looking for a refresher before Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out. Hi kids, it's me, your grand pep pep in the past. If you're confused and lost, well I mean we all are, but you should probably watch my other video first, covering everything up to this point. <coughs> Alright, then let's do this. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. Last we saw Sora, he was getting told by Yen Sid to get good. His main task is to relearn the power of waking, which will allow him to help those jumbled up hearts inside of him in Unjelly's Jam once and for all. I guess that's technically what he did with Kairi's heart back in Kingdom Hearts 1, but with the power of waking, he shouldn't have to poke his soft underbelly and turn into a bug. Yen Sid gives everybody who matters new clothing and sends them off. Oh, also be on the lookout for Keyblade wielders. We need like two more to get to seven, he says. Sora Donald and Goofy fly through a bunch of completely arbitrary Disney worlds that once again do not matter in the slightest, and Sora learns absolutely nothing about the power of waking. Jack Sparrow is actually a bunch of crabs in a trench coat, and Rex from Toy Story is obsessed with this hot new video game you wish you were playing instead called Verum Rex. Wait, is he obsessed with it because he thinks it's about him? Oh, and you can make Olaf. Also, Maleficent and Pete are back, and they're looking for a box. They don't find it. Pet a pet, aww. Along the way, we're reintroduced to the real Organization 13 and learn who the rest of the members are. Disappointingly, they're all characters we already know. Boo! In addition to the Norts we saw in Dream Drop Distance, there's Larxene, Marluxia, Luxord, Vexen, and Demix. But now they all have yellow eyes, yo! Oh. Also joining the gang is Vanitas from Birth by Sleep and Dark Riku, a time-traveling replica Riku from Chain of Memories. This is a different Riku than the replica Riku we met in Castle Oblivion, and we know this because that replica Riku is hanging out inside of the original Riku like a teenager loitering outside of 7-Eleven. There's also a hand-wavy explanation as to why Ansem and Xemnas blowing up revived old man Xehanort instead of Terranort, but don't worry about it because Terranort is back too, and there's even another hooded figure we'll get to later? This is way more than 13? There's too many hooded figures in this game. Some of the other former members of Organization 13 decided to be good and stay as somebodies. They hang out back at Ansem the Wise's place and dig through his stuff and find his naughty magazines. They text Sora old mm -hmm. memes sometimes. The, the somebodies figure out what we learned like three mm -hmm. games ago, that Sora has all these hearts jellying up his jam. Sora's like, I don't know if any of them even technically count as people, but we gotta help them out. He sets out to free Roxas because, ew, girls are icky, but he runs into a problem. For one, Roxas doesn't have a body anymore, and for two, Sora doesn't know how to release Roxas's heart. Wait, hold up, since when do nobodies have hearts? I thought the whole point was that they're a shell without a heart. You know what? I have no more fight left in me. It's fine. Wrong is hooded, this plot is convoluted. Roxas's friends show up and are like, hey, we don't remember Roxas because we were only friends with him inside a computer. And Sora's like, oh yeah, there should be a copy of his heart in the computer. But they don't know Ansem's password. Beep, boop, sad toot. Meanwhile, Riku and Mickey are so bad at rescuing Aqua that she turns into anti-Aqua. Which is actually fine because I mean she's rocking it. Mickey goes, what happened? And she's like, I was trapped here for 10 years and turned evil and got this sweet outfit. What took you so long? And Riku's like, I couldn't find my big car, my bad, lol. Sora pops out of a portal and helps his boyfriend Riku beat up Darkwa with the power of the Gay Blade TM. They unlock Aqua's face so hard she turns good again. Why? They zip over to Castle Oblivion and Aqua turns it back into the land of departure and they find Sleepy Ventus right where she left him having a big ol' nap. Sora tries to use the power of waking, but Vanitas pops up and attacks Aqua. He's like, heh <laughs> heh. And she's like, oh no. Suddenly Sora learns the actual power Power of waking because, you know, they had an opportunity to make the Disney worlds relevant, but no, you know what, now is fine, this'll do. Ventus's heart poots out of Sora and into Ventus, and Ventus wakes up. He jumps in front of Vanitas and goes, remember me? And Vanitas goes, oh, that's cute, because that's what I said in Birth by Sleep when And I Ventus pops him on the noggin. Ow. Did you toot? Elsewhere, Vexen grabs Demix and is like, Wait, I forgot Xehanort isn't even a real goth. Let's bounce. What do you mean? You willingly came back and let yourself get norded. Uh, I'm a double agent. I'm working for Ansem the Wise. Let's go. And on their way out, they steal an empty replica body for Roxas. 
for later. Oh, and Ansem the Wise is totally fine and wandering about in the background, but he barely does anything, so don't worry about him. Back at Yen Sid's place, the seven Guardians of Light are finally assembled. Sora, Riku, Mickey, Aqua, and Ventus are joined by Kairi and Lee, who spent 10 hyperbolic time chamber minutes in Merlin's moon bounce, so they're totally trained and up to the task. Mm-hmm. Yen Sid goes, Son of a Disney, is this really the best we have? Okay, y'all ready to fight Xehanort? Wait, Mr. Yen Sid, says Goo. Goofy. If the seven and the thirteen fight each other, then that'll summon the Keyblade, right? Yes, what's your point? So if we don't fight them, then Xehanort can never win! Wow, Goofy, you're as smart as you are handsome. But if we refuse to fight, Xehanort will just use the seven princesses of heart instead. Turnips! cries Sora. I won't stand by and let Norty Nort hurt Jasmine and Belle and Snow White and- No, actually, we're done with with those princesses. It's all about Frozen and Tangled now. But what happens- It's all about Tangled and Frozen! It may be, uh, Moana, eventually. Now go, appease our shareholders, and fight that Xehanort! So the seven Guardians of Light, and Donald and Goofy, take the battle bus to the Keyblade Graveyard. They battle against the Trillion Billion Heartless, and Sora defeats them with a choo-choo train. Choo -choo. But then Terranort shows up and kills okay. everybody. Oopsie poopsie. Sora wakes up dead in the final world and puts his soul back together by running through an Escher painting and high-fiving himself a lot. He brings everyone back to life and they fight another wave of a trillion billion heartless. But this time they summon the power of Union Cross and surf on a wave of Keyblades and the ghost of this guy without pointy anime hair winks at Sora. See? I called it. Yen Sid, tired of everyone's incompetence, blasts down from orbit and makes a path through the Heartless. Moses, Moses, I'm doing a Moses! He yells. Finally, after countless games and years upon years of waiting, we have our seven and our thirteen face off against each other. And it's all tense and quiet, and a tumbleweed rolls past. But Xehanort goes, Lol, nope, poof, here's a maze. Sora works his way through Xehanort's last minute corn maze of cheap suspense and takes out some organization members. He helps turn Terranort back into Terra, and Replica Riku kills Dark Riku while Riku watches. And Sora goes, Check, please. The final hooded member is revealed to be Shion, and she's evil again. But off screen, Ansem the Wise was able to log into his computer after finding his password underneath the keyboard and put Roxas's Digi Heart into the Replica body, and so Roxas enters the fight. Shion goes, wait, nope, I got my heart back from Sora. Thanks, Sora, I'm good again. And he's like, when did that happen? Whoa! All the while, each fight is bringing Xehanort one shard closer to the Keyblade. Kairi, for the first time ever, is about to do a thing. But before she can, she gets kidnapped. Oh, how convenient. Maybe next time, Kairi. Maybe next time. Sora's like, heck, I'm not gonna fight and let you summon the Keyblade. I throw down my sword. But Xehanort goes, Oh yeah, what if I do this? Psh, okay, sure. Threaten someone I don't even know. This is Kairi from Destiny Islands. Um, I think I know what Riku looks like. Pinty Girdered, your friend is now murdered. And he kills Kairi. Wait, I think I remember who she is now. No! In a frenzy, Sora defeats the last Norts, allowing Xehanort to summon the Keyblade. Try me this. Oh yeah, that was the thing I wasn't supposed to do. Whoops, he says. Now I'll summon Kingdom Hearts and make it purple and drippy, says Xehanort. Duck noises, says Donald. Bjork, says Goofy. Or at least he should have. Mickey, realizing he should probably do something of note in this game, stops time and pulls Sora aside. Hey, so it turns out that most of the organization members you killed were traveling through time, which is why they were back even though you defeated them before. And Xehanort is the portal that lets them do that. That makes every amount of sense. Thank Thank you, Mickey Senpai. Oh no, is that a wave of heartless I see? Stops it. So they dive into the portal that is Xehanort and wind up in Scala Ad Kalum, the stairway to the sky, and prepare for their final, ultimate, you better believe it's gonna be epic, anime showdown. Sora believes in himself, Xehanort turns into a goat, and the player mashes L2 a lot, trying to select the right... Damn it! <laughs> well, at least someone turned into a boat. At last, Xehanort is defeated. Dern Grummet, my plan was awesome. 
Everyone was gonna be all like, Oh, Xehanort, you're so cool. But you're not so cool, old friend. Everyone gasps with astonishment because it's the ghost of Ericus present. Yeah, this is one detail I probably should have mentioned in the last video. When Ericus died in Birth by Sleep, his little soul <laughs> particles got caught in Terra's hair, and he's been quietly hanging out inside of Terra this whole time. Xehanort goes, Heck, I guess you're right. I quit. Let's go get some sushi. Ericus and Xehanort hold hands and fly off into space, and there goes any chance we had a catharsis. Okay, cool, this is super underwhelming. Sora picks up the Keyblade and swarshes everything back to normal, and everyone's like, Hooray! Lee is chilling with Roxas and Xion, Aqua's hanging out with Ventus and Terra, none of whom have aged in 10 years, okay? And Sora goes to Riku and is like, Well, spit me out like the pit of a palpu fruit. I can't believe we all made it back in one piece. And Riku goes, You do remember Kairi died, right? Oh yeah, but if I bring her heart back, I'll be lost forever. Where does it say that? It says right here in my dramatic endings for Dingus's book that I ate for lunch. So Sora brings Kairi back to life and fades away. Later, nerds. And just then, Namine walks over and starts breakdancing. Ow! Meanwhile, Pete and Maleficent actually find the box they've been searching for this whole time, and it turns out to be the Master of Masters box from Union Cross. Remember that one right there? Mm-hmm. A hooded figure arrives and summons four of the five foretellers. They're like, Sup, Lushu, the other apprentice from Union Cross whose face we've never seen. You are right here in the lineup. Yep, that's you. Why have you portaled us here to the future? Also, we're missing Snake Girl or Rabbit Girl or whatever. And Lushu takes off their hood and reveals themselves to be... Zig? Bar. They apparently didn't die earlier. And our Lushu. Uh -huh. Zigbar or Lushu is like, whoops, looks like Xehanort's out of the picture and I'm the villain now. Honga's hands, the ride never ends. He he he. And then Sora wakes up in Tokyo and the guy from Verum Rex is there. Yes, the guy from the fictional game Rex was obsessed with. I do not know. Don't look at me. And that's it for Kingdom Hearts 3. Or is it? Might be. Most of Kingdom Hearts 3 took place in an alternate timeline dreamscape and there's actually some semi-decent evidence to back that up? I don't know. There's a link in the description to the theory, and it makes me mad that it's plausible. You can also click here and watch Gam read the theory to me while I work on this video that you're watching. Good night, everybody. See you in 15 years. Also, look, I got stickers now. Pointsnail.com. Bye. Also, get out of my house.